Now, she wasn't uh, your birth mother. You were no. adopted, weren't you? Um, yes. And this is from a, a teenage mum who couldn't yes. keep you. Yeah. So Barbara was your adopted mother. Um, when did this abuse start? I mean, was she was she unkind and cruel from the very beginning? Can you remember um, when it started? I would imagine. Well, there <laughs> there were pictures of me as a baby. She loved babies. Mm. But once she stopped being a baby, it was it was kind of different, and there were no more photographs really from really? then on. Not many, not many at all. There were lots of baby pictures. Um, I remember how I felt, and I remember how I felt as a child because you only know what you know if you're in a situation as a young person where all you have known is cruelty and abuse. And it's not constant. She didn't wake up every day and do this. This is just a sort of mood we, of the house that we were in. And When you say we, how many children? There, were, there was another boy called William who was also um, fostered and adopted. But what's really interesting about this is that when I was literally taken from the arms of my birth mother, who was 15, the social worker promised her that I was going to a loving family who desperately wanted a little girl. But the family I'd gone to was already it was going to mm. was already under the spotlight for the abuse and neglect and cruelty of William, another child. So So you were put into I was a home put in was... a dangerous situation wow. so from the So What kind off. of things we talk there about bathing you in ice. What about feeding you, generally looking after you? Well, it was erratic. Um, also, it's important to say that she was ill. She was mentally mm. ill and she was self-medicating. I think the drugs at the time for housewives were Librium and Valium. And she would literally take handfuls when she needed to. She wasn't a sort of steady... You didn't know that. I mean, as a no. child, you don't know that. You just think, why were they being so cruel? What have I done? Children often yeah. blame themselves. Um, tell us about, like, your nighttime routine, going to bed. Oh, that was awful. Um, we were strapped into, she was stra always strapping us into buggies. We were always restrained. Um, and at night time, she would use these sort of quite wide um, cotton or straps to strap us into the bed. I would hear William being strapped in, and then I knew that I would, he was always strapped in. Um, and then... And you weren't allowed to get up to go to the loo? No. So did they, you wet the bed? Yes, it was her idea of training us that we had to go to the loo before we went to bed so we didn't get up again. So if you wet the bed, what happened? We just lie in it. Oh, it's awful. <laughs> it was cold they, as well. They, you say in the book as well that sometimes it wasn't being hit that was so scary. It was like waiting. Mm. It was the waiting. Yeah, what yeah. was the mood going to be? It was, it was like, uh, I tried to describe it once. It was like, you know when you, if you've been for a walk in the woods and you get a bit lost and it's that twilight feeling when it's going to get yeah. the how do I get home? It was like that all the time. You were tense and I used to read her face very, very carefully to see if she was going to go because if she went, it was her face would change and her eyes would change and then you knew... Or something, mm. well, something might not happen. Yeah, but it's the it's it was the, the anticipation. Um, you know, obviously, eventually you did leave. You you married yourself, happy marriage, two children. Mm. Um, when did she come back into your life? And she, when did you decide I need to look after her now? She never left my life, and this is um, a lot of people find this hard to believe. I left at fifteen. I, I had I had to go. It wasn't safe. It was wrong. I had to leave. Um, but you're always looking for their approval. You're constantly seeking uh, their acceptance. I wanted her to like me, so I would work quite hard at playing this role of a good daughter. I would invent the life, oh, everything's fine, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm all happy, and how are you? And, and, and try and have regular contact, and I'd go and visit her quite a lot, and I'd always drive home crying, because it was always quite negative. You moved her to be near you, yeah. and you cared for her right up until her death. Um, did do you ever get that approval? Did she ever say anything kind to you? Did she ever say I love you? No, no. She never touched me either as a child. And it's interesting. I, I, when my son was little, I used to, he used to come with me to visit her. She lived a few roads away, and I, he, you know, I was cuddling him, and she said to me, "You will ruin that child." And that was her mentality. But then you discovered that she had been abused by her, yes, that's her own when it, father and yeah. she'd become pregnant by him. So, I mean, she'd had a terrible, yeah. terrible childhood. And that's when you said, I understood rather than yes. gave her. 
I, I, I realise that being angry and being resentful is a complete waste of time. It does you no good whatsoever. And actually, to give her some unconditional love, I realised that she'd never had it herself. Mm. So if I could just be there for her and do right by her, I could um, help her end her life. Mm. Right, you're in a happy place now, though. Yeah. You've got mm. your sons. Yeah. You've got your book out. Louise Allenson said you've got your book, Thrown Away Child. Has that been difficult to relive that? And has it helped you, just briefly? Um, I, my keyboard was soaking from my tears as I was mm. trying to type up what happened. But yes, it's been good. It's, it's made it definite. It's, it's clarity and it's gone. Yeah. And I think you need to do that. You can't carry this huge stuff around with you. You have to let it go. So it's done that, which mm. is good.